Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you, the YouTube audience, the training that you need to tackle projects like this on your own. Today's project is going to be in our stucco repair series where we are at the stage where, where we are going to put on the uh, stucco lath which is basically the wire. Some, some people call it the chicken wire because it so, because depending upon what wire you purchase, it can, it can look like chicken wire. Now, when you purchase the wire, there's basically two different types of wire that are um, sold. Uh, one's called non-furred and one is called self-furred. Now, if, if you have the choice, on depending upon your project size, you want the self-furred um, uh, la uh, stucco lath wire because it has... Um, it's already furred out. What that means is, is that when you have your your sheathing or your base wall that you're up against, it furs out from it. So the the wire furs out from the wall. It self furs. That way, when you put your your uh, first coat of um, stucco on, then it will uh, key into uh, that wire and it will uh, create that bond which is what you're trying to achieve. If you just have the flat, let's just say a flat substrate uh, sheathing and then you take wire and you held it against it flat, you're not going to get that proper key which is what is surrounding that, um, that wire, that uh, stucco lath wire. In my particular case, because uh, I'm uh, not a professional stucco installer and because I just have a very small uh, project, the smallest wire that the Home Depot sold uh, that was self-furred, the smallest uh, cost for that, uh, roll, that bundle was uh, $71. And I, I got, when you see the project, it's tiny. It was, I didn't want to spend $71 just on the wire. So I went and purchased the diamond lath wire, which I'll show you in one second. It sold at $9 a sheet, and I can probably do my whole job in one sheet. I bought two sheets just in case um, I was wrong in my calculations, but I got a feeling I'm, I'm going to be able to do the whole project with one sheet. So instead of spending $71, I only, only spent $9. But the, the uh, stucco lath that I purchased is non-furred, which means I have to fur it out from the wall. Now, what I did to attach my um, stucco lath is I purchased this product right here, which is the... Uh, uh, Self-furred is a furring nails made specifically for stucco. And you can see how they have this large section here. The wire goes in between the nail head and this furred out section of the nail. So uh, I had to buy this box. It was the smallest box the Home Depot sold. And this box of one and a half inch galvanized uh, self-furred, I mean uh, furring nails was $20. So, kind of expensive nails, but uh, that's it is what it is. Now, <clears throat> you have to have a, a lot of nails put into your project because the wire is what is actually holding up the actual stucco. The wire is held in place by these nails. So all the weight of all that cement uh, stucco material is going to be all held in place by these nails. The code says that the maximum spacing is six inches. Let me show you the code right now. All right, we're using just our abbreviated code uh, book here, Code Check Complete Second Edition. And we are gonna come down here to the uh, section on building. And it gives you, it shows you a little pictorial about a uh, stucco wall. This, the first section of the stucco wall is the weep screed or sill screed that's already put in place. Then the next section of this project would be the paper or building paper. We've already put that in. We have a minimum of two layers on our project. Now you see that wire, how that kind of looks like chicken wire. Mine looks a little bit different because it's a, like a diamond mesh. I'll show it to you in a second. But that's the stage that we're at just before the stucco goes on. Here is what the uh, code has to say about the, the stucco and, and uh, it has certain information 
uh, where it must comply with. It tells you that the the lath fastener spacing maximum is every six inches and it tells you on the minimum three coat system and, and so forth and it, and it, and it goes into uh, certain things must uh, maintain uh, moisture in the wall for 48 hours before subsequent coats this is on the three coat stucco system and it, and it goes into and here, well here's your your coats right here if you're doing it I'm not doing a traditional stucco but if you were the scratch the brown the finish it tells you that you need a minimum of seven days from the scratch uh, coat then 48 hours for the brown coat and the finish coat seven days and that's you have to do all that uh, because the uh, pH of the um, and the setting of the material and stuff like that they want uh, a certain amount of time in between the coats. I don't want to wait this much time to do this small project so we're going to use Rapid Set. There's a product that we're going to use Rapid Set Stucco Patch. This stuff here is patch and paint in two hours. So this is like fast stuff for small projects such as what we're on. Okay, so this is the section of uh, stucco lath wire that we're going to be installing. This is just one section. I got another section in the garage. Let me give you a detail with my hand behind it so you can get an idea of what that kind of looks like. Um, now, this is so uh, basically, I should be cutting it with tin snips. I got to put gloves on. Let me show you the job. This is the complete job. You can see it's not that big. It's about eight feet from there to there and about four feet from there to there. The distance is about 14 inches from the wood to the sill screed or weep screed. Uh, my intention is to start over here in this corner and then work my way around. So let's get to it. Here it tells you that the diamond mesh lath to horizontal framing with minimum one and a half inch nails. So the um, the nails that we are using are one and a half inch. Here they are right here. And uh, where's that size? One and a half inch right there. So those are our furring nails that we're gonna be using. And apparently that's called wadding. And this here also helps to put a seal on the water resistive barrier to prevent water intrusion from that nail penetration through the water resistive barrier. Okay, let's get to town. Okay, so I'm starting with my first piece right over here in this section over here and I've got two um, of the furring nails uh, holding the um, the stucco lath in place right there and I just have one nail on this side over here just holding that in place because I want to cut it uh, at the um, sill screed. So I want to make that cut first at the sill screed and then I'll go ahead and put all of them in. But just to kind of show you where I was at, there's the, the two that are being held in place. Okay, now that the, uh, the, the netting is kind of on the wall and I've got it cut at the sill screed right where I wanted it cut, now we can go ahead and put the, the, the furring nails in. Now, we know that we need a six inch space is the maximum per code, right? So if we take my tape measure and we measure out six inches from where that top screw is right there going down, we can go down to as far as uh, where my finger is a little bit lower so I'm going less than six inches and then six inches from that screw 
uh, from that nail takes you to right here. So basically, because the distance that I'm working in is 14 inches, and it's about six inches between uh, each nail, it's only, only going to be a three nailing pattern. One at the top, one at the bottom, and one in the middle is how we got to do this. Okay, so our next nail is going to go right about here. Now this wadding is so fat that it actually can't go through like this and then in. So what you have to do is go backwards and put the nail in backwards. So first of all, I want to figure out, okay, I want my nail right about, let's just say right here, right? So I'll put my nail in this way, come back, hold it, and then put the, hold the nail up, put it in just holding it, and tack it in with the hammer, and then set, and then cinch that in tight. And now just move down the wall. But basically, that's going to be the process. So let's keep going. Okay, here's the next stud. I already got one at the top, so we need to put one in the middle and then one at the bottom. So I just take my furry nail, bring this back a little bit. I want it right about there. Just put this through like so. Hold that up, hold it in. I just got it started. Let me leave it loose for now. And this way I can get this second one set up like that. And I'm holding the nails up when I do this. That one actually went through the, uh, I, could, I could hear the tin, so I know it went through the, um, uh, the sill screed flashing on the way up. That's okay. You can tell I'm going into solid stud framing right there, okay? And this, by the way, is your furring. Let me show you that on a detail. Okay, do you see that distance between the wire and the paper? That's the furring that they're referring to. I'm just using this to give you an illustration how it can get. This is how the stucco lath is going to go. Uh, the stucco is going to go into the lath and key in. Rather than, if you didn't have this wadding creating that furring space, this is where you wouldn't have the proper adhesion uh, at the stud levels. Now in my case, because I actually don't have sheathing, I just have paper, it would probably still be okay out here in the field, but it, if I didn't have the, uh, the, the this wadding to create that furring, then at all the points where, <laughs> where it's adhering to the actual stud, then it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be keying into that section properly. So anyways, that's that's to give you uh, the detailed explanation of what's happening here. So this one is done, we're just going to keep moving down the wall. Okay, now that you've pretty much got the technique down, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and roll this next section, but basically just continuing on down the wall right here. Now that first piece uh, uh, ended right there at that seam, so we're going to have to come around the corner and do overlap there, but that was this that was as long as the first piece would take me. And then the trim that I cut off at the bottom section of this piece right here is just sitting over here on the ground. But we'll, we'll uh, get to that when we, uh, when we wrap around the corner. But right now, we're just going to get this section here and finish this off. Okay, I just want to show you that we're maintaining our six inch distance. So here, from here to here, is just under six inches, and from here to here is just under six inches. So just confirming this three-hole pattern is good, and that we're you know we're solidly anchored into into our uh, framing members.
See right here in between these two studs, it's a little puffy coming out by the sill screed. So I know that I've got a base plate going right there, so I'm just going to put a um, furring nail right there in the base just to take care of that sponginess. Let me show you that. Okay, so right here it's a little spongy. Okay, so and what I'll do is go about halfway in the center of the two studs, which is right about here. Just pull that back a little bit. And I know that my sill, uh, sill plate is right about where my finger is. So I'm just going to take this furring nail, put it in that hole so I can get it in there. There we go. And now when I land that, it should hit solid framing sill plate to give me some some anchorage. That also just kind of beefs this up. It gives it, it, gives it a little bit of uh, rigidity uh, in between the studs. So I'm just checking the uh, checking like this one here is not so bad so I probably don't need to do it but I don't think it would hurt the to have an extra one there. It just gives me extra um, extra strength, but I don't even know if it's necessary. I might just be going overkill here. Just because I don't have that much experience at this. This is a good space over here. Let's do that one. Okay, the space between this stud and this stud is pretty good, so I'm going to put an another uh, furry nail in right there at the base of that right now, just to, just to give that a little more strength. Okay, that is going to secure this first piece. Now I'm going to move on around the corner to the second piece. I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video that if you want to check out the whole series of this video, make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, check out my other links on the uh, Stucco Repair series to see this entire job start to finish. The segment that I'm showing you now is just on putting the uh, stucco lath. This is non-furred stucco lath on the wall. So that's what this segment is about. But check out my channel for the complete series so you can see the whole job start to finish. Now we're going to focus on putting the stucco lath on this section of the wall. I have an outlet that I have to contend with. So I'm going to put the stucco lath up and cut around it so I can get it attached. Then we'll bring it around the wall, overlap this section by, I don't know, uh, maybe six inches or so catch the studs on this side. I know that I have a 4x4 and a 2x4 so I've got uh, about four and a half inches from the wall over of good um, of good material to, to, to catch on to. So let's get to it. All right, I just have it held in place with three nails. One in the in the corner right there, one right there. Well, not yeah. One, two, three, and then I just have it sitting there loose, and I wrapped it around the corner, and then cut this section right there that you saw, and then just try to held it in. Uh, I will need to cut the bottom because this uh, side is a little bit too long. And what else? And I got to put the uh, the the nails in the furring nails. So. I guess I'm just going to kind of start uh, holding the top of it in, making sure it's in there nice and uh, tight, and working my way from here over to this way. Then uh, I'll just kind of hold it down, trim out the bottom, and then put the, the nails in all the way around.
Okay, now that I've got the uh, bottom section there uh, all trimmed out, and you got to be careful. This is a uh, real sharp stuff. And even though I'm wearing gloves, I got nicked here on the uh, on my knuckle a little bit. So probably should have worn thicker gloves. But now that I've got this done, I'm going to uh, start doing the furry nails where my studs are located, starting in this section and working around the corner that way. All right, that's the final product for the uh, lath stucco lath netting. Try to give you as much detail of that as possible, and tried to really secure around the uh, the box, the electrical box, and all three sections there. And I did good overlap. Did extra nails on the corners, so you can see I put plenty of nails because I had plenty of wood there to anchor into. So I just put in extra support uh, nails there and let's go around the corner I'll show you that side and here's the detail on this corner here you can see I got plenty and I did a good overlap there so there should not be an issue and I don't think we're gonna crack on that corner so I got I wrapped the corner with the uh, the lath and I did good overlap seam to seam and then you can just see basically the um, the rest of it but uh, Pretty straightforward, uh, you know. I think it uh, came out well, and it feels it feels good to me. The job feels feels secure, like it's not going to go anywhere. That is the first time that I've ever put stucco lath on a on a house. I've never done a stucco project before. This is the first time I've ever done it, and let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it too. So I hope this video gives you, uh, if you haven't done this project on your own yet enough ambition to uh, go ahead and get your feet wet and start a, uh, in my, like in my case, a small project and uh, try to get uh, used to the uh, products. Now, this is going to conclude um, the this uh, segment which is on installing the uh, stucco lath and the next segment will be actually installing the stucco. Now in my case, you, as you know, I'm using rapid set because I don't want to wait uh, the 28 days that it would take in order to uh, get to the right pH level before your paint ready. So um, I'm going to be using rapid set on uh, starting the uh, next segment. Plus, So uh, please check out the rest of the series and the whole series. Subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't done so already, please click on like. It really helps the uh, algorithms for me. And uh, leave some comments if you'd like to on your projects and how you thought this project came out. Love to hear your comments on what your thoughts are. Am I, am I going about this the right way? I am not a stucco expert. Uh, so this is the first time I've ever done this job. As far as I know, I did the job correctly. Can I guarantee that? Uh, no, I can't because I am not, I don't have 20 years of experience where I do this every single day. So uh, just trying to do the best I can as a DIYer. And that's what this channel is about. To, for the DIYers of the world who are not uh, stucco experts who or, or you know project expert specifics this is uh, my channel if you check out my channel it's kind of vast I go into a lot of different uh, areas of discussion and different topics so uh, so that's it I will catch you on the flip side